And the last thing on this list, the pre-render, we didn't discuss that in the previous movie, and I want to discuss it now. And uh, I'm going to take you through my pre-rendering. Pre-rendering is very simple, very easy concept. We've done all this work. We've made sure that our conform, our finished timeline, the conform, matches what the offline editor gave us. What we haven't done is figured out, well, when we send it back to, in this case, Final Cut 10, will it work? Will the XML survive the round trip? Will Resolve find some corrupt frame that even while I'm grading, I never landed precisely on that frame and it doesn't realize it's corrupt and only realizes it when it actually renders frame by frame through the entire film? Uh, is there a corrupt frame in there? Is there something else in here, some little bit of metadata that Resolve is happy to ignore until the moment it has to create that XML or that AAF if you're going to Avid? Is there something in those files themselves that will cause Resolve to not even export them? I don't know. We haven't tested that. And so what we have to do is test that workflow. The only way to test the workflow is to do the workflow. So I do what I call a pre-render, all right? And uh, it's, it helps me find all of these problems before they actually begin. I can solve them on day one. That way, I'm not two hours from delivery and suddenly realizing I have a four-hour render that I have to re-render with only two hours left. I never, ever want to be in that, that position. I'd rather be a day behind because I've spent a day, I found a problem and it took me a day to fix it. I'd rather be a day behind and work really quickly to catch up than, than to miss my deadline, all right? Missing a deadline is not acceptable. So um, this is how I go about solving that problem. I call it a pre-render. Let's take a look at how I do the pre-render. Here we are back in DaVinci Resolve and I've got my mother died uh, timeline pulled up and none of it's color corrected. You can see there's no little rainbow markers underneath any of these thumbnails indicating that one of these has been color corrected. So this is essentially just the raw film uncolor corrected from our camera masters. All right, so what I want to do is essentially just render this out and I'm going to render it out the way I want to deliver it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be actually delivering this film in two ways. One as a single clip, which I would then deliver back to the Bloody Cuts boys who can then use that uh, to upload uh, to YouTube. And then individual source clips, which, you know, for the purposes of this training, I want to show you how to do this. And this is really the more, most difficult of these two for uh, Resolve to actually deal with because the individual source clips, it's going to generate an XML or an AAF. And we want to make sure that it generates that document correctly. So in this case, I'm going to pull up an easy setup, which is the Final Cut Pro XML round trip. And remember, when we pull these easy setups, they ensure that real numbers and time codes get placed in the file structure of each individual clip is appropriate for either Avid or Final Cut. They need to go to different places, whether you're going to Avid or to Final Cut. Avid is way more specific about where it wants your real, real name to be. And so I always pull up one of these easy setups, usually either Final Cut Pro XML round trip or Avid XML round trip when I'm doing a round trip. So I always be sure to start work off a preset. In this case, it's Final Cut Pro. I want individual source clips and it's gonna render this out to whatever I want. Normally I'd go to ProRes 444 because I'm coming from red R3Ds. I wanna go to the highest quality and so I'm gonna click this to ProRes 444. Although frankly for pre-rendering, I'm not against you going out to ProRes 422. I have no problem with that. Really the most important thing in the pre-render is just to make sure that Resolve hits every single frame, analyzes everything, spits out an XML or an AAF, and ensures that everything is appropriate. So the choice of your render codec really isn't quite as important, but when I don't have a reason not to, I just render out at the highest quality that I would normally deliver the job at. You know, the quality that I'm con contracted to deliver the job at. You know, the closer I can replicate the round trip workflow, uh, the more likely I am to find any potential problems. So I'm gonna set this to ProRes 444. And I am going to turn off rendering the audio. And I've got a folder set up here called Test Renders. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK on that. And then I'm going to create a subfolder called pre-render so that all of these, all of these individual renders will be essentially 
gathered together in this subfolder. Now, one of the things that Resolve 10 does, uh, and it's doing it fairly well nowadays, is at the end of the render, when you have the preset selected, it's going to export out uh, the flavor of XML that was imported originally. In this case, it'll be XML for Final Cut 10. So uh, it'll end up in this subfolder that I place it. It'll render out all the shots as well as an XML for those shots if it does its job correctly. I'll leave everything else here default. Render each clip with a unique file name. Yep, that's appropriate. Zero frame handles. None of these, what I've given you for this film, has no handles, so you don't have to worry about adding handles. Force sizing to highest quality. Absolutely. Force debayer res to highest quality. Because this is R3D Source Masters, if you're working with those R3Ds, for my final render, I'm going to force the debayer to the highest render quality. And on an eight minute film like this, this will take about 20 minutes on my system without a red rocket card and with a single GPU. But. I'm not going to do that for the pre-render. Really, in my experience, when working with red footage, uh, it'll fail if I'm at quarter res or if I'm at premium. If it doesn't fail at quarter res, it's not going to fail at premium 99 times out of 100. Uh, and so if I don't have the time, especially if I got a two-hour feature, I'm not going to spend 16 hours on a pre-render. You know, I'll work at either half res or quarter res to just kind of move it along. I'm just trying to increase my confidence that I'm not going to run into anything on the back end without wasting, but I don't want to waste my time, right? So what I'm going to do is not force the debayer to res to highest quality. I'll come into my preferences. It's now going to render out at whatever I have my camera raw setting set for here at red. I've got quarter res good for decode quality. So that's what it's going to render out as. And I'm fine with that. I've got a previous render that I set up here before we recorded. I'm going to delete that out. And yeah, so everything's good. So I'm going to add this job to the render queue. The one thing I missed is setting an in and out point. So if I zoom this all the way out using the zoom slider. Yeah, I've got, for some reason, I've got an in and out point on the back end of this thing. That's not what I want. I'm going to click this little button and it's going to select all. And, but the problem is I didn't have this item in the render queue highlighted. So if I click on it, you see it didn't take. So I need to have this clicked on and now I can change these settings including the in and out for this render. So now I'll set that in and out and now it'll take for this render queue. And then before I ever hit render, I always, always, always hit save. Uh, because if there's gonna be a problem, it's usually right after I hit that render button. I wanna save everything I've done. So I'll just command S and do a quick save here. And now I'm gonna start the render. What I'm going to do is pause here, we'll fade to black, and then when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, the back end of the pre-render and what check make sure that Resolve gave us everything we needed, if it didn't, how to generate what we need in order to pull this back into Final Cut 10 and take a look. And we're back. I've got the green check mark here showing me that it's completed. Now what I'm going to do is switch it to the finder and I'm jumping into my mother died folder. So, you know, I put this in under from Fini. I've got a folder called test render. So when I double click to jump into this folder, all right, I've got my pre-render folder, but also look what DaVinci Resolve did. Not only did it create a folder called pre-render, if I twirl that down, these are all our pre-renders. Not only did it create that folder, but it also created this document and it put it above this folder. Now, this happens because I used this little routine here, subfolder. So what's going to happen is the XML that puts this timeline back together again using these renders gets placed in the folder specified in the render job to. And then the subfolder is where all the actual renders get placed. If I didn't have pre-render here and I put everything in this, in this main folder, then I'd have both this XML and all of these files out here in the main folder. All right, so that's how this works. Now, not every time does this FCP XML get generated. Uh, sometimes when Resolve gets a little flaky, it doesn't generate the XML. So the first thing I always do after a render finishes is I press save. This ensures that even though DaVinci Resolve, if on my very next click, DaVinci Resolve quits, if I press save, that ensures that Resolve remembers I did all these renders and it remembers where these renders are so that when I manually generate an XML, it will link back to the proper render files. If I 
don't do that. And DaVinci Resolve suddenly, you know, explodes on me, which happens from time to time. Uh, I often have to redo the render. Uh, and, and so let's take a quick look and show you how I would go about creating the XML. Imagine for a moment I hit save, DaVinci Resolve burped and quit out on me. So I relaunch. Then I'd come out here to the edit tab. I'd right click on the little XML timeline and select export. And I want it to export either an AAF, XML, or EDL. Any one of those it'll do. I'll go ahead and do that. And now what a lot of people miss is in this dialog box, export timeline is files of type. So right now it's going to export out an FCP XML 1.3. That's the most recent XML version, which may or may not work on the version of Final Cut 10 I've got. You've also got the 1.2 version. Let's imagine for some reason that I want to export out an AIF to get this into Avid. Even though we started in Final Cut, imagine they want this in Avid. I could go ahead and select AAF. And now I'll come back down to from Fini test renders, and then I could just put at this top level, this AAF, I'll save that all. It's telling me, well, I can't actually round trip your AAF, but a new AAF will be generated. That's pr pr uh, perfectly acceptable since it came in originally as an XML. 